So good morning and good evening. Welcome to the Circle of Harmony, where today we are taking up the topic courage. Now we all might have our own definitions of courage. So I thought it would be interesting to just reflect on this together to understand courage better. Because one thing is, you know, just, of course, you know how we are reading, learning, seeking knowledge. And yet when that knowledge has to be put in our everyday, it requires a strength, it requires a faith, it requires some courage. It mostly requires myself to stand against myself to say that, no, this has to be done or something else, you know. So, yeah, so that's the topic. So just before we begin, invoking Mother and Sri Aurobindo's grace and presence, the Divine's grace and presence, seeking for suppleness, courage, strength, flexibility, expansion and openness as we begin this session. Thank you. So just a reminder that this is a sharing circle. This is not a discourse. This is not a lecture. We are all here to share what we feel, what we don't see, what we would want to see or be. And if we are comfortable and if the internet allows, if we can keep our cameras on, that would be great. It helps in the discussion. If not, that's fine too. But interactive, I mean, we have to share. You should, that's what I just wanted to stress on. And we'll begin by sharing what Courage means to me. What is my definition of courage? What does it mean to me? If I have seen something courageous, something that has stuck with me, something I've heard, something I've seen, someone I've met, my story of what courage looks like. If we can share that, we, that's how we can begin today. If anybody is willing would request them to unmute and share. Let's see where this takes us. So courage. Okay, I will share. Do, do you hear me okay? Yes. Okay. Well, I think it's it's a big word and, and it can mean a lot of things. And probably it will mean something different for each of us because of our different characters and fears. In my own life, I think... When I was a child, I, I used to see these epic stories and then courage seemed to be a, a brave and, and a, uh, almost a synonymous of, of strength. Of, but in, in, in my inner journey, I started to feel that for, for me, courage was more of a, in some way, a soft quality. Uh, I have found that for, for me, at least, uh, I needed to develop the courage to, to be cheerful, to, to, to be uh, to have a to be vulnerable to uh, 
sometimes I know I, I don't know to to have a strong character to 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 sometimes the strength felt as a way to 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 be separate. I, I don't know if I'm I'm trying to figure out, uh, but yes, uh, in my life I felt that courage was something like that to be, I had to develop the courage of, 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 of being vulnerable, of, of, of showing where I truly feel uh, to avoid defenses and many reactions of the ego and just be open and, and tender and, and also I think I had a very some tendency to be overly serious and and I and I found that I needed courage to be to 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 be cheerful to 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 laugh to to have a you know for living light as you say to um, that's what comes to me. Yeah, thank you, Juan. Thank you for going first and thank you for sharing so beautifully. So we are just starting with sharing what courage means to me. How do I look at courage? How do I define it? And if we want to share any incident that stands out to us that for me that was courage or I've anything on those lines to just open the session. We are all sharing a little bit and we all do have sharing. So I would request everybody to mute. Yes, uh, Charuji, please. Yeah, that is. so uh, recently uh, uh, my daughter Meera got married. See, during that time, everyone were, you know, insisting on something to keep... Uh, I'll, I'll share this incident. So everybody wanted us to keep our in-laws photograph on the stage, you know, because that is the custom here. Those who are, you know, seeking their blessings type. So we were very particular that, you know, it's not required. We can keep it inside. Always they will bless us. So this time, um, my husband and myself decided we'll keep it inside in our room. We'll do pranam before going to the stage and, you know, that's it. We can start the procedure. So, two, three people. First, one person came and, why? You do, you have not kept your in-laws photograph here. He said, yeah, it is inside, I said. You know, after that, you know, our relatives, one by one, one by one, everybody started coming and, you know, as if I'm doing a sin type. Oh, you have not kept? Oh, what is this? So, like, you know, expression was like that. So, I didn't uh, lose my cool. I said, no, no, it is inside. We have done whatever we have to do. It is okay. But you know, after some time, everyone just went, you know, without even reacting. You know, this weird reaction everyone gave and they didn't acknowledge or accept what we were doing. But they, they went and sat. And, you know, after that, I realized I didn't lose my cool. That was, you know, the biggest courage for me. We, I did what we wanted to do. So I didn't expect anybody's acknowledgement or, you know, anything of that sort. So I was happy we could do what we wanted to do. So this is courage for me. I felt what we felt correct. I We did what we felt correct. Yeah, this, 
that is a courage for me and i was uh, you know so surprised at myself i didn't get tensed up <laughs> what is this i am not reacting in you know like smiling face only i was reacting so that was uh, biggest courage for me thank you yeah thank you thank you so much for sharing yeah yeah uh you know there was something shared in the group today i uh, yesterday about you know how the society is more concerned about how things are packaged than what is inside i'll pull that out but meanwhile it is whoever would want to go next maybe a sentence or two i mean we all do have definitions of courage not the definitions from the book but what courage means to me if we can unmute and share that would be great Hi, Taro. Wow, thank you, Shere, before I disappear. <laughs> but, uh, you know, when I think about courage, it, it brings me to heart. So I think courage, uh, the meaning might have something to do with the heart as well. As well. So to me, courage is really about uh, a more heart-centered approach to life, to like living life from the place of heart. And it's to, or true to your heart and that at times courage could mean that I'm saying personally in that sense and courage at times could mean being vulnerable or being strong whatever it is but really bring true to your heart so for me it's more about heart-centered um, you know living uh, and I know society thinks courage in, in different terms, being strong or, you know, being brave. But I think when, you, when you're able to live your life true to your heart, so whatever it brings out in the outer world, um, whatever form it takes in the outer world, whether in, in terms of interaction, in terms of action, to me, that's courage, personally. Um, but I also think that that's something I had to learn to cultivate. Maybe it's more when you start living more aligned with your heart. And by heart, I don't mean emotions, but I mean just heart um, and that approach to like more open hearted. Um, I don't mean in a selfish, my heart, but it's an opening. It's more universal. I don't know. So, but I do feel that something had to be consciously cultivated because we're so conditioned to live in certain ways. And I think it's essential to do everything, right? You need to be kind of brave to execute things, to say no, to say no to others and to say no to your conditioning, to your patterns, to your habits. So I find courage was kind of the foundational piece in um spiritual growth, even having the courage to take this uh, path of self-growth, choosing self-growth. Yeah, find that interesting. Yeah, Jasmine, you'd be very surprised to see what I'm about to show you. I just saw this this morning. The root of the word courage, the Latin word for heart is C-O-R, core. In one of its earliest forms, the word courage meant to speak one's mind by telling all one's heart. So courage is a heart word. I don't know if you've read that, but I was surprised yeah. when you said it. No, this completely resonates with me. Yeah. I know the core courage like means heart, but I didn't know this. But yeah, this is yeah. like completely what I... Thank yeah, you, exactly. Thank yeah. you for sharing. Yeah. Mm. For me, I think courage has changed. The definition of courage has changed as I have grown and changed in my life. For a very long time, courage for me has, was always to... Um, create my out of circumstances in a way that I feel right. So I have to choose the career that I like. I want to be in a place that I like. I want to marry somebody that I love. 
it was all about i myself and how my outer circumstances are you know created in a way that makes me feel good makes me feel like an individual and not letting other people decide what i should do with my life and i always thought that what courage is but now from i think after the depression especially i have started to feel that courage has become more like an inner journey for me where i i just feel like that it's all in a work that how much i can align my will with the universal will with the divine's will and how gracefully i can let go not create what i want or you know um i focus on the exterior circumstances so much but more about letting go of my own ideas of how things should be so a more gracious acceptance i remember even my mom was diagnosed with cancer and for the journey of courage and how i saw how ch- meaning of courage changed for both of us it started with fighting the cancer and you know how we'll fight it we'll not let it win and everything but towards the end i remember the chemotherapy session that she attended and a very painful process to see your loved ones go through it even the whole process is quite quite hard but i remember when it happened she told me that we used to do pranic healing together and she told me that it's maybe it's not about fighting the cancer so much but it's about telling the cancer that that too is divine you too are divine and maybe just accept it now you know we don't have to keep fighting it it takes a lot of energy a lot of resistance is created and that i couldn't sleep that night because i said oh my god how 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 can i accept how can i accept because if i accept cancer that means my mother will go and um, i think that was also i realized that day that courage at this point of time is more like an inner work where i have to let go i have to let go of what i want but accept what she wants and yeah and and what divine wants so yeah i think that that's it i think to really align with the divine will you need to be courageous enough because you have to let go of your ideas of your impurities that keep coming in between that will so yeah yeah thank you nandini Yeah, Birenji. Anything from you on Karit? Oh, Dia, sorry. Please go ahead. Hi, everyone. This is Dia here. Uh, Karit. Sometimes to me is also the ability to accept wherever we are going wrong, or ability to see or acknowledge that our ways might have might not be the best way as we were thinking all through. So that is. uh when we reflect on something and are uh, uh when we are willing to change our way that is also a mark of courage yes thank you so much um jagan would you like to share morning good evening everyone uh for me definition of courage is is to not think about you know um me more importantly you know my definition of courage is to uh, not have these to, to to express without having this thought or to do to to make an action without thinking okay what will happen to me or what will happen to uh, you know my life or some my someone of my loved ones lives so without that questioning and all just going for the truth and just uh, uh, being able to you know kind of uh, face it so yeah that's that's pretty much my courage and uh, my experience you know <laughs> i've have i've had some experiences but uh, there's only one which i can which i can express without feeling that swell and uh, that is 
you know for me courage is uh leaving my family in india and coming back um you know although it's 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 a fact that you know everyone's being taken care of you know the mother but for me to uh, accept that it's not me that that is taking care of it's the mother and then uh, leaving them and coming here uh, not just not just recently but every every single time it's for me that's i think is courage thank you So there's a message uh, from Virenji. He's saying that to me, it is about being authentic and true to one's belief and willingness to live through the consequences of the choices that one makes in life. That's how he defines marriage. Yeah. So Jataji, are you... Uh, will do you have the capacity to unmute? Yeah. Yeah, I will. <laughs> so, um, <clears throat> for me, two years ago, I had I had to go through cancer. And uh, initially, I was very scared. But then I just gave myself a lot of courage. My family gave me a lot of courage. I learned that this is just my prarabd. And I have to go through it happily, willingly, and the radiation was difficult, but I still went through it all, and I guess I came out with flying colors. <laughs> now it's all behind me. That's one part of courage which I had. And the second part is, now I don't really fear anything because I have a lot of courage in me. And third part is I, I accept everything as it is, I don't uh, say, why did this happen? Why is it happening? I just accept it as part of my life and my what I have to go through in my life. And that makes me feel more courageous every time, more, more and more, I guess. That's it. Yes, thank you. Thank you for sharing. just our definitions of courage so it's synonym of strength it's a soft quality sometimes we need courage to be cheerful to be vulnerable to have a strong character not to lose my cool what is true to my heart if i do that true when self. i say that then that's courage how can i align my will with the universal will so my efforts to align my will is courage. Letting go of my ideas is courage. Gracious acceptance is courage. To align with the divine will is courage. To accept my mistakes and be open for improvement is courage. Not to think of myself for me, that's courage. To be authentic and true to one's beliefs, to live through the consequence, the willingness to live through the consequences of my choices is courage. To not fear anything is courage. And to accept everything as is is courage. So these are some of the definitions of courage that we discussed today. Did anybody unmute? I thought I heard something but I wasn't sure. Yeah, Jasmine, please uh, feel free to unmute if you have the capacity and share. Yeah, hi, Taru. Um, I loved how you put the note. It, um, what came to me, I feel, is courage is like all and Encompassing in a way all of life with an open heart, I feel. Again, I come back to that. But, um, and I think fighting fear, what somebody said, is having no fear. I think having no fear is just a personal experientially. I think it was 
it is not possible. Fear will be there. I think it's a part of our humanity or our, our biological narrative, you know, that a survival thing that fear will come. But to be able to hold that fear, because I think when you start living from more heart-centered place, um, your heart opens up, whether you call it compassion, whether you, you know, all these qualities come up. So you get the courage to hold that fear. And instead of fighting fear, you kind of grow so, feel so much bigger than that. You realize you are so much bigger than that, that you're able to do whatever. Again, you know, it's very funny. We Everything comes down to doing an action, you know? We still kind of assess, which is, I think, okay, which is part of duality in the sense, humanity, that we start seeing how we live it or how we bring it into action. Um, so, yeah, that's all I wanted to say. Like, even in terms of living, when it's talking about living, it's, uh, I think, um, there's no end to fear in this world. It's just a human nature. It brought me more ease when I made room for that fear. Somehow it made me feel bigger than the fear, made me realize my own vastness. So that's all I have to say. Thank you. You know, it's just a way of putting things. You know, sometimes we just put things in different words. Yeah. So anything that I would want to do, which I have not been able to do, can be courage, is courage. Anything that I feel I, you know, it appears to be the highest. You know how they say, don't choose what gives you pleasure, what you are feeling kind of just with this easy, but choose what is auspicious, choose what is good for you. So that's courage, yeah. You know, when I think of courage, there was this little girl once I met on the streets of a small town in Punjab. I was just, on, I was in a random um, small park with swings with my four-year-old. And there were some girls who used to live in the street. You know, their mother, parents used to maybe sell utensils and... They just came running when they saw two people were playing. I was playing with my kid then they wanted to play too. And uh, after three, four days, you know, we started talking in general because we would go every day. And there was this girl and uh, he's, I said, you live here with your parents? And she said, no, just my mother and my siblings. And I And he was like, you know, the way she said it. I said, well, your and like she said, my, my dad is no more. So, you know, Papa kai, Papa mar kai. As in, where is your dad? Dad is no more. So, there was no emotion, there was no pain, there was no drama. Like, it was very factual. Okay, where is your father? Dad is dead. And then, when she said that, I saw that on her arms there were some burn marks, like pretty bad burn marks. And I was like, what happened? And she said, oh, once, you know, in winters, because obviously there's the winters in Punjab are quite bad. So once in winters, when I was kind of, you know, sitting in front of the fire, my younger brother playfully pushed me in the fire. And I was like, and? And he was like, jal gaya. So I was like, oh, and, you know, it's like, and then, and she was like, nothing, theek ho gaya. I think, you know, the simplicity with which that seven, eight-year-old child could put these things. And even when she was describing about her dad, she was like, you know, he said, you know, we were just too many of us and he couldn't take care of us. So the stress of us killed him. The It was just, I couldn't believe because, you know, a lot, most of the time when we talk about trauma, about incidents, we have a lot of drama around things, right? Things are bigger than life that this happened to me. So I don't know. I, that re, I mean, when I thought of courage, she uh, suddenly from somewhere she came that, yeah, done, then, you know, done with and over. It, it burned and then it pained and then it healed. So I thought that, that too is such a beautiful way in which we can take life. Yeah. 
That was really beautiful, actually. You know, uh, courage is you know giving up our stories. You know, yeah, the stories we can build around things, and that's so true. Even with like Kabir, like my six-year-old son, I sometimes find. Like I recently realized that I give so many lectures. I give him so many simple things, and what am I making it heavy? <laughs> so lately, you know, I've been backing off on this. I don't know which one I have to give him a lesson, but I'm learning lesson. He's just present. He's just simple as that. But it's like I want to build a my life story around it. That we're big, okay, little, okay, but it's just so simple. <laughs> yeah. So it was cute that uh, the story that you shared at the morning noon. Kids are just so um, present, and they say kids are very heart centered, right? And the first, especially initial years before they do, in the sense they are, their energy is so different. So maybe we need to get back to that. <laughs> That's a good reminder. Yeah. Yeah, Snehi. Uh, would you like to? Sh- is she gone again? Yeah. Okay. So, uh, Meera, I thought that was again, uh, Sarada Ji. Would you want to share what courage means to you or any incident? Any? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, I think I joined a little late. So, I think what the question is, is to, uh, is to sort of communicate our thoughts on what courage means to us, right? So I think uh, what courage means uh, recently, what I've been contemplating on is that when there is uh, some situation that is not favorable or when someone is sort of opposing you, courage for me is to handle that situation with calmness and not like sort of go around saying, you know, what I'm saying is right and like not get violent, not get angry, but like have that calmness so it sort of auto communicates your position so that i think is very courageous because it, it's a, it, it requires a lot of effort from our side to hold that inner calmness and that is because if if you're fearful right if you're not courageous then i would be like you know my position is getting tarnished i need to sort of lash out at that person i need to claim that power and that wanting to prove that i am right or this is right and my thought process is right things like that but when i'm courageous i would i would not care so that inner calmness would communicate itself so i can recently i guess that's what courage meant means to me for now yeah thank you thank you for sharing Yeah, when I again reflect on courage, what you said, you know, it appears a lot of times, almost all the time, there's something that I want from a situation, from a person, from myself. I have an image, like we keep sharing, you know, of others and of myself, of about how my life should be, how I should be in front of people. So I was thinking that, you know, when I don't need anything from anyone, that would help me to be more courageous in whatever I want to be then. Because I keep molding, I keep bending, I keep altering a lot of things because it appears that there's something at stake for me. So to keep touching that space, to keep questioning that why are you doing this? What do you want? Tell me what do you want? Because those things are embedded inside me, right? A lot of times. So to keep poking that, yaha se kya chahiye, you know, <laughs> why are you here? Or, so that opens up so many things for me. And, you know, for this, you know, even, you know, having the grace to, look at uh, Monica, you know, her life, the way she lives her life very closely to have that opportunity and that blessing. I mean, the courage with which she just says things, does things, you know, just fearless. I remember once, you know, we used to take vegetables. It's a silly story, but from the same organic farmer and he used to deliver those veggies at our home. 
but suddenly we realized you know one day that he's not doing a good job we'll switch and all so the farmer called me and he said you know i spent so much time i spent so much energy my life is dedicated to this one so he was a businessman but he was doing a business of organic farming kind of and he was trying to emotionally blackmail that you know you should not switch when he saw we haven't ordered from him in two weeks and i was just you know it was covid time and i was like yeah 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 you are right yes you are very brave yes 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 and i just wanted to cut the conversation short and i knew i would not be ordering but i what to tell him you know i just didn't want to indulge and that was it and then he called monica and then when monica shared you know she was like that i am doing so much this is it and monica was like it's a business you are earning money so what are you doing you know and he was like dumbfounded and you know so call things on people's faces and he didn't have anything to say then you know that too takes a lot of courage but there is something you know i want the other to think that i am polite i want to, the other to think that oh i understand or he is not wrong you know the courage i feel it takes courage to not hurt people but i think it even takes more courage to be honest and not care about if anybody is hurting because what hurts is the ego right so in general like that courage to just call it on our faces but you know and that too it's it's not rude it's not it's just being honest that is that not true kind of a thing and i see it so often so often that no matter what just saying what one considers to be true holding things lightly and stepping back i feel that is courage yeah. and one can do that effortlessly when you don't want anything from anyone otherwise obviously whenever you want something you're not able to do it because you want to protect that relationship that image and then in all this protecting you know just life is just i don't know whatever it is doing <laughs> yeah any more thoughts on this any more reflections so when uh, sarda ji was sharing i was listening to this thing that was shared yesterday on the group by sir anthony hopkins so this, i thought this was really beautiful and one can feel this was this is being said in a arrogant way but it doesn't feel arrogant to me it was very if anybody would want to read it aloud for us that would be great and if there's any reflections they're very welcome to take them can i read yes please thank you <clears throat> my philosophy is what people say about me is none of my business i am who i am and do what i do i expect nothing and accept everything and that makes life easier we live in a world where funerals are more important than the deceased marriage is more important than love looks are more important than the soul we live in a packaging culture that despises content anthony hopkins yeah thank you you know again i was saying that this could feel arrogant but this can also be said very politely right because some of the words used appear to be arrogant but it doesn't need to be so here what was interesting among you know it was all very interesting and thought provoking but this thing right like here i expect nothing and accept everything usually it's the opposite right that we expect a lot and we are wanting not wanting to accept things so this is a i like that that it has to be together usually we expect and but we are not willing to give that what the other is expecting 
But most importantly, what was really hard hitting was that the truth of this, and because we have seen this in our everyday lives, for most of us, we live in a world where funerals are more important than the diseased. You know, I remember, and it's very weird, but you know, when my, I don't know, years back, when my grandfather, my Nanaji, he expired, so in the cremation grounds, they, they, I was little at that time, but I heard people say that, oh, he must be so happy because, you know, we got to burn him in the VIP area. So in the cremation grounds, there were different spots. So there are some spots for the VIPs if when they pass on. So by chance, that spot was available and they were able to get that. And I couldn't fathom that, you know, my God, so somebody has left his body and the people who are here are saying that he must be so happy that his body got burned, you know, in the VIP area. Like what could be more funnier or hilarious or I don't know. I don't want to go. I mean, yeah, I can go on on this, but I don't want to. This is truly hilarious. Nothing else. But like, how can anyone even think at that time? <laughs> he doesn't even know he's being cremated. And mm. uh, they're talking about VIP. Mm. Kamal. Hai. But you know, story of our life. I mean, seriously, these things, you know, how we have discussed this before that, you know, we call our cremation grounds Mukti Dham and Shanti Dham, you know, the places of rest. As soon as a person dies, we get 50 messages of RIP, rest in peace. You know, all these things are just for ourselves to feel better. So that's the reason, I guess. So here, you know how he says that the funerals are more important than the deceased. Marriage is more important than love. And looks are more important than the soul. So we live in a packaging culture that despises content. So if I want to pay attention to content, if I want to develop the content and not care about my packet, that is courage again, right? So, yes, uh, anybody else on this? Yeah, you know, on that sharing about that VIP um, funeral, it's just interesting how one might think that by, you know, uh, cremating some some of my, you know, the loved one in a, in a VIP cremation ground will make that soul or whatever that, you know, that the thing that left the body will make it happy. Although, uh, I think, I don't know, I'm just saying this, correct me. And although this man's nature of sticking to material things will stop as soon as the soul leaves the body. And yet, the assumption is that, okay, well, even when he leaves, he's just looking at the cremation and he's like, Acha, that's nice, I'm in a VIP cremation ground. So that's, that's a very interesting thing. I heard about those, um, you know, those... Uh, those cascades or whatever you call right here they pay hundreds and thousands of dollars to in a in a building not a not a cremation ground and they say you know i'm going to be cremated right next to george washington or whatever that is so that's very uh interesting to hear yeah yeah and the pain with which it was said, you know, it rings in my ears still because the person saying it very close to the person who had passed on. And it was like, you know, assuring that at least, you know, this is our solace that at least he is being burnt in that. But yes, moving on. So uh, I was, uh, I have some, uh, I found some small passages from the mother and I thought we'll go through that and then we can again reflect on what that means to us. So just sharing. Yeah. Oh. 
So again, wherever the word courage came, I was I just was trying to understand that better in their life. So if and uh, Jagan, you wanted to read uh, last time. If you want to read this time, no, thank you. My dear mother, I have deceived myself and you all along. I'm filled with imperfections and lower impulses. I boasted of my purity, but now I see that it was all boasting, full of pride and ego. Dear mother, make me vividly conscious of all my defects and imperfections. I lose neither courage, nor heart, nor strength. My strength is you, and in you I rest. Everything will be all right in time. There is only to keep up a patient aspiration and an unfailing confidence in the divine grace and its assured victory, always with you. 23rd January, 1935. I'll, you know, I'll just read that uh, second line from the first paragraph. Yeah. I boasted my, I boasted of my purity, but now I see that it was all boasting, full of pride and ego. Yes, thank you, Jagan. You know, repeatedly in these things that I came across, so first of all, you know, Mother is kind of congratulating most of us that, oh, now that you know this is good, that you see, right, that all that thing was a boasting or whatever. And what is needed is a patient aspiration and an unfailing confidence in the divine grace. You know, as soon as the person says that I lose neither courage nor heart nor strength. Because that's what we do, right? As soon as we discover something in ourselves, a weakness, an impurity, we lose courage, we lose heart, we lose strength. And we feel we are not worthy of the. And here, the person is so nicely saying that I lose neither courage nor heart nor strength. My strength is you and in you I rest. So then, you know, mother's answer is victory is assured. So very simple if we don't complicate it. Uh, also, you know, that particular line, it really uh, strikes because... In, uh, I'll just say that one more time. Yeah. Can you show it? Okay. Yeah, that, that particular line, it's just coming back. I don't know. Uh, I boasted of my purity, but now I see that it was all boasting, full of pride and ego. Uh, whoever expressed this is very courageous. <laughs> uh, I think that's very, very true. Uh, I don't know. Now I can, I don't know. After reading it, if I look back even at myself and I think, yeah, that's true. Um, you know, sharing something that was achieved or, you know, um, that, that was kind of, um, like if I've won something or if I've overcome something, when I'm sharing it, there is always a swell. You know, the sharing does not happen without a swell. And... Um, Matlab, you know, I keep saying that I have to go beyond me, beyond me. But when I talk about me, then there is always this, this, uh, you know, I don't know what, what do you call this? There's this torch I carry that, oh, you did this. I'll have to see, you know, how it's possible to share without that swell. But it's interesting. Yeah. So, uh, if anybody is willing, we can read the next one.
dear mother when anything happens to the body it loses courage at once and becomes weak helpless and full of fear in one word there is no peace and equanimity in the body consciousness not only the body but the entire consciousness gets clouded and veiled there is no remembrance of the divine in the physical consciousness and it is this that catches the illness and prolongs it yes that is quite rightly observed but to have but to have become conscious of it is a big step towards a successful transformation of the body consciousness and the victory over illness my love and blessings are always with you yes thank you mantani so again this alertness this awareness this consciousness that how things are working in me is another thing that we can call courage right here it says uh, i don't know this is words of the mother mother says our courage and endurance must be as great as our hope and our hope has no limits usually courage and endurance we give our own personal caps right i could do so much and then i can't do any more i can bear so much but i can't take this any longer or the pain is too much the inconvenience is too much or that's it i've reached my end but mother says rereading this our courage and endurance must be as great as our hope and our hope has no limits you know since i'm sharing i can see if anybody unmute so in case you unmute please just say you know start speaking and i'll stop this quote reminded me of uh, a shared here as well in the message is about savitri one of my favorite passages of savitri i think um, you know usually we think savitri is about love and human victory but i also see it as a for me it's about courage what courage actually means is what shavit savitri shows to us and and like what birinji also shared about making the choice and then having the courage to bear the consequences of the choice so this is where when she knows um, the passage i think here where she knows that now satrivan is going to die and or she doesn't share it with anybody else with her in laws or anybody else and even satyavan himself doesn't know that he's going to die and then um here i think which one was it even in this moment of her soul's despair in its grim rendezvous with death and fear no cry broke from her lips no call for aid she told the secret of her wo to none calm was her face and courage kept her mute so i thought this is exactly what courage is you know sometimes we think courage is about and collaborating talking with people and trying to find solutions but having that certitude in divine victory having that courage to keep mute and the last line as well her strength was founded on the cosmic might the universal mother's love was hers so i think you know that's i, I feel that's the highest definition of uh, of um, of what courage is really i sometimes tell myself because i sometimes feel oh my god i'm so alone and this and that and you know these things and then i just i think savitri <laughs> i think who okay, have to really keep reminding of savitri and how she could do any these lines i think she should also say that even here her even her humanity was half divine so just like us that we are human half divine yet has the potential to become full divine so it's not that she is has become the divine she's still like us so if she could do it we all could as well that's the i think that's the hope <laughs> yes nandini and if sabitri is coming to us to 
you know the lines from Savitri are coming to me to pick me up that means something right is being done and you know on the same lines like not almost on the same line but this too felt parish to me you know yesterday I was reading synthesis and then one of the line was that you know the ideal sadhaka should be able to say my zeal for the Lord has eaten me up. So I found that very beautiful. My zeal for the Lord has eaten me up. So just I like sharing that. And Anandini, what you were sharing, you know, even there's this quote from Winston Churchill, right? That it takes courage to stand up and talk and it takes courage to sit down and listen. So, although what you shared from Sabitri, that was more profound and yet for every day, that too is courage. Because a lot of times we feel that courage is just, you know, that freedom fighter or that soldier or that you know we have this image of action of re and yet silence too needs courage right like when you know you're sitting down for some silent time and all those things are coming from all over and to keep sitting and not get frustrated to keep at it takes courage yeah Uh, you know, there's this, uh, recently I came through, there's a movie, there's a real uh, thing, I don't know what the name was, Di Di Diane, uh, what was her name, Nard, I don't know. So there was this person who, who wanted to swim from Cuba to Florida and uh, I think it's, it takes, I don't know, 80 hours or something. And the water is full of sharks and jellyfish. And nobody could do it. Nobody attempted to do it. Like any people who attempted to do it, some who attempted to do it, just couldn't do it and jelly attack or anything. So this person, she did it. She tried, you know, she was the first person to try to do it when she was 28 or something and she failed. And then when after she turned 60, like she stopped swimming after that because she felt that she gave up mentally, like, you know, it was a failure for her. But when she turned 60, she felt that life cannot just be mediocre and you, I can't just now wait to die. I have to do something different. And she went back to swimming and at the age of 64, after I don't know, five, six, seven attempts. Yes, Birenji, you're right. Would you like to share about it? If you are, have the capacity to mute, it would be lovely to hear your view of what you thought of that story. I don't know if what you can What is it talk. called with that movie? I, I, I don't recall the name of the movie, but uh, let, let me just think. I just saw it a few weeks back. It was amazing. Actually, the willpower that she had exhibited was just phenomenal, actually. So uh, I think more than anything else, you know, the uh, belief in the self and, you know, uh, willing uh, and the positivity. I think these were the two big things that I took away from there. Yeah. Yes, Taruji, I just shared what I had to. No, could you just give a recap of the story as well? Oh, Jagan, do you also know this one? Nad, no, team Nade, uh, something like this. Anand or Nad. Nayan, yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Let me... It uh, is, it's called the Mount Everest of Ocean Swims, the 110-mile trek from Cuba to Key West, Florida. Yeah, I don't know if I shared the sound. I just... Yeah. Oh, no, this is just a sound effect. Sorry. So, yeah. So, N-Y-A-D was the name. We can see that. And so, basically, the, the sea is full 
the ocean that you know between florida and cuba it's full of jellyfish and sharks and I don't know what all is happening. You know, there's a shark which is about to attack or she has the like, jelly, like she faced my back is burning and all. And yet she refuses to get pulled out of the water because she says, no, I want to go on. I want to go on. I want to go on. And she's delusional and something happens and there's a storm and they had to pull her out. And while she's lying down, she's still swimming, you know, because like her mind refuses to give up although the body is exhausted and tired and I don't know like 60 hours, 70 hours, 80 hours in water, spending night day in water which is full of sharks and jellyfish like it was so again it's like you know we have our own limits and just to know that these limits are my limits Right? I could say that humanly it's not possible. Right, What are you talking about? People have not attempted it. And at the age of 64, after stopping to swim for about 30 years, 40 years, 30 years, I think 32 years, she restarted and she did it. After 5 attempts, 6 attempts, her team gave up on her. Okay, no, it's not possible. We can't keep doing it. They had no money, nothing. And yet there was this thing that no. I can't quit. I can't quit. So just this just feels very strongly that you know, all the limitations are self-imposed. So I think we'll end here today. So if there's any last comment, we'll take it. But I'm just I would be requesting everyone present to, you know, just reflect more on what courage means to me. What is courage and if I had to be more courageous where would I need to be more courageous and you know how will that help me where do I need to do that so just that like we don't have to share but just taking out some time to think about what stops me from being courageous if anything stops me and how can I transcend transcend that if I can yes Jasmine no <clears throat> what came to me with you were sharing about the movie is you know having that courage to fa fail to face that failure <clears throat> that's a very common and a very insidious fear of us right failing almost so that's what came to me about that like uh, about a team giving up everybody giving up but her not giving up on herself and it's not so much about i think well, symbolically, it's like uh, um, swimming through that ocean with all these sharks. But internally, I'm thinking that 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 external is just representation of her internal that she overthinks. And uh, failure, I think, can be a big thing because it's so ingrained in us and so deeply, like even comes out of the shadows, you know, the failure. So that's what I wanted to just bring up. That's what came to me. Yeah, so absolutely. the courage adding on to a uh, courage to fail, you know, just simply courage to fail. Yeah. So that's it. Sorry. Yeah. And knowing that, you know, the definition of failing is mine. Right? Like, that's it. Failing is mine. Yeah. And because when so I we take on other you... people's, right? Yeah. Yes. But yes. what matters is how I define failure. It's for yeah. me, me to define. Yeah. yeah, that was that was another. Yeah, that was really right on. Thank you. Yeah, the courage, uh, the failure is for me to define how I define failure. But we end up defining failure with whatever. Yeah, yeah. We could do a topic on failure. Yeah, we could. <laughs> so, yeah, just yeah. Yeah. This is enough. I like yeah. to keep it nice and sweet, yeah. <laughs> you know. Yeah. Thank you. So, you know, because the people who would be calling out that she failed are the people like us sitting on the TV watching her, for example, right? So what? How do I say she failed if she, you know, kind of was pulled out after 60 hours of swimming in a, I don't know, whatever, a jellyfish attack or something. So, again, just to take things in context and looking at that. Yeah. Yeah, thank you, Jasmine. So just taking one 
last minute to just thank divine thank grace for the blessing that my life is for the so much i have and for the so much i can see and be grateful for that i don't see i aspire to see more and more things to be grateful for so aspiring for courage strength to face everything so that i can live the life i would ideally want to live to so praying for strength and courage for everyone now and yeah thank you thank you to rook and